story concerns a strange event that took place. But whenever the townspeople gathered together, rumors were exchanged, rumors that other numbers lived in the dark woods beyond the mountains. But no one could imagine a number that wasn't a natural number, so no one believed the rumor. At that time, nobody worried about robberies because if, for example, five stole something, he would always take five of whatever he stole. There was no special reason. That was just how he did things. And seven would steal seven things, and ten would steal ten things, no more, no fewer. And because of this, the thief could be easily identified. So there weren't any robberies, and no one bothered to lock things up. But one day, there was a robbery. Nine, who was the baker, rushed over to the sheriff's office. 763, who was the sheriff, leaned back in his chair and asked Nine what was stolen. Uh, just, a, just a little piece of bread. One piece of bread, said 763. I can't believe it. One is the mayor. He would never steal. Uh, no, no, said Nine. Not, not one piece of bread. A little piece of bread. Not one piece of bread, but a piece, said 763. What kind of nonsense is that? I'll show you, said Nine, then you'll understand. 763 hurried over to the bakery shop and was amazed at what he saw. Only a part of one loaf was missing. He couldn't imagine who could have taken it. One would have taken one whole loaf. Two would have taken two whole loaves, but none of the numbers would take less than one whole loaf. All right. If no number can take it, then no number did take it. But someone did take it. Someone or something. That night, 763 and 9 hid in the back of the bakery and waited. Suddenly, a little creature in a black cloak crept in through the door and scurried over to one of the cakes. It cut the cake into three equal pieces and took two and scurried out, leaving the third piece behind. 763 and 9 ran after the strange creature. 763 caught it by the cloak and pulled it off. 763 and 9 stepped back in horror when they saw what was beneath the cloak. It looked like a miniature 2 on top and a miniature 3 on the bottom. It's horrible, shrieked 9. Then before they knew what happened, the creature ran off. After it! After a long and hopeless chase, they thought they saw the creature run into an old barn on the edge of town. But neither of them wanted to go inside while it was dark. So they decided to wait until morning. At daybreak, Nine went back to town to get help. By that afternoon, a large crowd had gathered in front of the barn, and suddenly, the barn door began to open, and a strange creature emerged. But it wasn't the same one that Nine and 763 had seen the night before. It looked like a miniature four on top, and a miniature six on the bottom. I... I'm sorry if I disturbed anything, it said. I live in the dark woods beyond the mountains. I wanted to see what was on this side of the range. What about that other thing? asked Nine. What thing? asked the strange creature. It had a two on top and a three on the bottom, and it, it stole my bread and cake. Oh, that's two-thirds. I didn't know he was here, too. He's a real scoundrel. Uh, uh, are there many others like you in the woods? Yes, of course there are. What do they look like? Well, said the creature, there's one half. He has, as you say, a one on top and a, and, and a two on the bottom. And five-fourths has a five on top and a four on the bottom. And I'm called four-six. Is there, asked five, a creature in the woods with a, with a five on top and a five on the bottom too? Uh, no, not in the woods, said Four Six. He's, he's right here. Where? Right there. 
But that's one, our mayor. Oh, yes, he could also be called five-fifths, said four-sixths. If nine would bring some cakes from the bakery, I'll explain how. Now, this cake is for me. Mm. Uh, so I would cut it into six equal pieces and eat four of them. If you gave the cake to that scoundrel two-thirds, he'd cut it into three equal pieces and eat two of them. And one half would cut it into two equal pieces and eat one of them. Five-fourths would need two cakes. He'd cut each cake into four equal pieces and eat five pieces. Four-six then asked five to cut a cake into five equal pieces. Then four-six said, Tell me, one, how many pieces of that cake would you eat? Why, well, said one, I, I'd eat the whole cake, of course. But how many pieces is that? Well, it, it's five pieces. Exactly, said four-six. That's five-fifths. Five-fifths is one of your forms. If you really concentrate, you can change forms so that you'll have a five on top and a five on the bottom. So one concentrated and concentrated, and he became a five on the top and a five on the bottom. Uh, but his wife, 186, was so upset to see her husband in this state that he changed back immediately. You see, said 46, you're a rational number, just like me, and like all the numbers who live in the dark woods beyond the mountains. But what's a rational number, asked one. Well, any number that can change itself so that it has a natural number on top and a natural number on the bottom is a rational number, explained 46. Can I do that too, asked five. Certainly, said four six. All natural numbers are also rational numbers. Pick a bottom number. I'll choose three. All right, said four six. You eat five cakes. So we'll let three cut each cake into three equal parts. Now, how many pieces will you eat? Let's see, said five. I'll eat uh, three, six, Nine, twelve, fifteen. Fifteen pieces. So, one of your forms is fifteen over three, said four, six. Because when you cut each cake into three equal pieces, you eat fifteen pieces. And it was true. For with that, five changed into fifteen thirds. But three, his girlfriend, fainted. So he changed right back again. Six. The sun's going down and I must be on my way. Uh, goodbye, fellow rational numbers. Uh, just a moment, said 763. Where is two thirds? He's wanted for burglary. I don't know. Since we're all rational numbers, I'm no more responsible for him than you are. That's right, said one. Have a safe journey, 46, and remember, you're always welcome to return. Afterwards, Nine discovered he could become 18 over 2. And one said, I'm 2 over 2, and 3 over 3, 4 over 4, 5 over 5. Wait a minute, cried 763. All of us can have many different forms. That's right, said the others. Then, said 763, pointing to the mountains, they can have different forms too. Of course, agreed the others. Then, said 763, Four six can take other forms also. What do you mean? I just have a hunch, said 763. Look at this piece of cake. If we cut it into six equal parts, our friend four six would eat four of them. That's right, agreed nine. So we'll put four pieces on this tray. Now, asked 763, how much would two thirds eat? Well, nine said he'd cut it into three pieces, and, and interrupted 763, eat two of them. But, but that's what four six would eat, shouted nine. Exactly. Then, said nine, 
four sixes is is the same as two thirds. Finish seven six three. I'm going after him. Maybe I can still catch the scoundrel. Throughout the years, many of the rational numbers from the woods came into the town to join the natural numbers. Until the time came when all of them lived there. Even two thirds came, and 763 continued to chase him. But two thirds always found a new form to escape from 763. Many years later, rumors came that strange new creatures were now living in the dark woods beyond the mountains. The rumors said that these creatures were numbers too, but they couldn't take the form of a natural number on top and a natural number on the bottom. It was said that some of these numbers were rational numbers, but some weren't. But no one could imagine what a number would be like that couldn't take the form of a natural number over a natural number. So, no one paid any attention to the rumor.